What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today is finally my best books of 2019. I read so many great books in 2019 that compiling a list was so hard, but today I have my 20 favorite books of 2019. These are not all published in 2019, these are just all the books I read that I really enjoyed, but I do have a reading stats video that you can watch up here if you would like to know more of my stats and things like that. But let's get to the video. I'm going to be counting down from 20. Let's get started. The Love and Lies of Rakshana Ali by Sabina Khan. This is a debut novel and it is an own voices novel about a girl named Rakshana who is a lesbian, but she's in the closet because of her conservative Muslim parents. Her mother catches her kissing her girlfriend in her room and is sent to Bangladesh to meet a boy. And this was just such a wild ride. I really relate to the main character so much in this situation and I really, really enjoyed it. It was such a great and powerful debut novel. Coming in at number 19 is a historical fiction middle grade and this is One True Way by Shannon Hitchcock. This is set in the south in 1977 following two young girls, Sam and Allie. Allie moves to Sam's school and she ends up developing feelings for her and they don't know what that means. And all of the adults in their lives are telling them that homosexuality is bad and an abomination and this all talks about Christianity and the Bible and I just really enjoyed this. This was such a powerful Powerful message for young queer kids. Coming in at number 18 is Famous in a Small Town by Emma Mills. I read this in December and it came out in January and Emma Mills quickly became my favorite contemporary author. I absolutely love this book. It is about a girl named Sophie who lives in a small town and she's trying to get a famous country artist, Megan Pleasant, who is from their hometown, to play at a fundraiser. And so the whole story is about that, but it's about so much more. It is about friendship, having a very strong friendship, and gaining trust. This was so good. I loved it so much. I devoured it and I can't wait to read more of Emma Mill's work. Coming in at number 17 is a comic series that I discovered and this is The Avant Garde's Volume 1. This was amazing <laughs> and I was very devastated that I only had one copy of it and it was only one volume and I couldn't binge the series. This is about a group of queer college students and they form a basketball team. This is about a group of queer college students who are trying to convert this other girl onto their basketball team. And that's all I can say about it. I just really enjoyed it and I can't wait for volume two to come out. Number 16 is a novella and happened to be the shortest book I read this year and this is Fearless by Shira Glassman. This is a female-female romance between two band moms and they're snowed in during a tournament and it is their blossoming love story and I loved it so much. I read more of Shira Glassman this year and I really love her as an author and I'm so glad that I discovered her this year. Coming in at number 15 is a graphic novel and this is On a Sunbeam by Tilly Walden. This is a sci-fi book set at a space school and it has so much diversity. It's queer, it has a non-binary character, and it was just such a fun ride. I really enjoyed it. The illustrations were beautiful and I felt like I was in space while I was reading it. Tilly Walden is a new graphic novel artist and illustrator that I recently discovered this year and I can't wait to read more of her books. I can't believe that I hadn't picked them up sooner. Number 14 is Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. This is a thriller that I read this year and absolutely loved. I was on the edge of my seat while I read this and I devoured it. And now I'm afraid of apartments. This is about a girl who accepts a job as an apartment sitter, but there are some strict guidelines. She's not allowed to have any visitors and she must be in the room at all times. One of the apartment sitters that she befriends disappears one day and she wants to get to the bottom of what is happening at this apartment. A lot of shit happens and I am now afraid of apartments forever. <laughs> Number 13 is Girls on the Verge. I love this so much. This book is all about a girl and a road trip to get an abortion. There was so many great topics in this. Like this was such a powerful book and it taught me so much about how hard it is for women in the United States and just in general to get an abortion. They have to go three hours and there are so many complications with the process. This book was so heartbreaking to read. This book really opened me up more to knowing more about abortion and it was just such a phenomenal book and I highly suggest to read it. Number 12 is an audiobook. I was obsessed 
obsessed with audiobooks. I read 18 this year, and this is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I love this book with my whole heart. I can't wait to reread it in 2020. It is going to be such a good time. This is about a fictional band, Daisy Jones and the Six, and the audiobook alone was just so good that I believe that Daisy Jones and the Six is a real band because it is. Taylor Jenkins Reid is an author that I discovered this year, and I can't wait to read more of her work. I just loved this so, so much. It was amazing, and I was never bored once. Number 11 is I Wish You All the Best by Mason Deaver. This is a own voices non-binary book about a non-binary teen named Ben, and they come out to their parents, and their parents kick them out of their house, and they have to go and live with their estranged sister. I related to this book so much in so many different ways. As a trans person, this was such a great book, and I absolutely loved it, and the incorporation of art was a nice touch. This is a debut novel, and I can't wait to read Mason's 2020 release. Coming in at number 10 is George by Alex Gino. This is about a trans girl named Melissa, and she starts school, and she just wants to be Charlotte in Charlotte's Web. And her teacher doesn't want her to do that. This is another book that really hit me, and now I'm gonna start crying. <laughs> This book really touched my emotions and I could relate to it so much as a trans person and really not discovering that until later in life, I really would have appreciated to have a George when I was younger. Coming in at number nine is a historical fiction and this is Like a Love Story by Abney Nazimin. This is another book that I listened to on audiobook and it was spectacular. This book is set in 1989 New York City during the AIDS crisis. This book killed me. <laughs> it made me soft, it made me cry, and it was just everything. We follow our main character Reza, who is a Randian boy who moves to New York City and starts at a new school, and he ends up meeting two people, one who is gay and one straight girl, one straight cis girl. This is all about his internalized homophobia, and it is just such a great novel, and it really made me love historical fiction more this year. Number eight is Playlist for the Dead by Michelle Falkoff. This book I picked up on a whim because I had it on my shelves and it easily became a five star. This is about a boy named Sam who finds his best friend Hayden dead. And Hayden leaves him a playlist and this is all about his hallucinations and just the grieving process. I really love books about grieving and this did a great job. And I also love books about music so this was perfect for me. Number seven is Peter Darling by Austin Chant. I've talked about this so much this year that you're probably sick of it. This is a trans own voices retelling of Peter Pan where Wendy Darling transitions into Peter Darling. This was so good and I just loved it. I just love seeing trans characters out of contemporary books and I love this. There's a Captain Hook romance and I just absolutely love this book. Number six is The Music of What Happens by Bill Coingsberg, another book that I listened to on audio and I think I read it physically as well. This is about Max and Jordan and Jordan is starting up his father's food truck that he left to him a couple years ago when he died because his home is close to being foreclosed. One day, Max walks up to the food truck and Jordan's mother gives him a job. Max and Jordan have to run a food truck together and they also have a romance. I love this because it talks about toxic masculinity, sexual assault, and just, it's a bro book, and I love me a bro book. Coming in at number five is Beartown by Frederick Bachman. This is about the town of Beartown, which is a hockey town, and a 15-year-old girl is sexually assaulted by one of the boys on the hockey team, and a lot of things happen. This book made me so angry at times, but in a great way because I knew that Frederick Bachman was doing a great job writing. This book is one of my favorite written books, and I can't wait to pick up more from Frederick. Frederick Bachman knows how to write sports, especially hockey. I loved all of the hockey scenes, and they've helped me to write my own book about hockey, and I just loved this so much, and it's definitely one that I would reread, and I also listened to the audiobook. 
Number four is another thriller, and this is No Exit by Taylor Adams. I absolutely love this book. It was so good. I stayed up so late reading this book. It had me so captivated. At the beginning, I was a little bored, but then once the thrilling aspects came, it was crazy. This book has gore, and it is so thrilling. I'm not going to give too much away because of spoilers, but I absolutely love this. It is one of my favorite thrillers to this day. I had to charge my batteries because my camera died, so here is the top three. Number three is Ziggy Stardust and Me by James Brandon. This is about a boy named Johnny who is grieving the loss of his mother, and his father is very disapproving of his sexuality, so much so that he forces him to get aversion therapy. It is very graphic. Oh my gosh, you guys, I loved this book so much. There are two things that get Johnny through his hard time, and this is Ziggy Stardust by David Bowie, and a boy named Webb Astronaut. Webb is one of my favorite characters of all time. He is such a memorable character and his character means so much to me. I listened to this on audio and I read it physically and I honestly only listened to it on audio because I really needed to know what was going to happen next. If you're looking for a queer historical fiction, I highly recommend this one. It was so good. Coming in at number two is Hope and Other Punchlines by Julie Buxbaum. It's about a girl named Hope who is known as Baby Hope from a famous 9-11 picture and I swore that this picture was real so much that I kept looking it up and it wasn't real, but the way Julie wrote it just made it so real. There's this boy who is fascinated by Baby Hope and they meet during a summer camp that they work at. The boy has a project for his newspaper where he wants to find and interview all of the people that were in that picture and it was just amazing. It was such a unique 9-11 story. I feel like there are so many generic ones, but this one was so different. I love Joy Books Mom. She's one of my favorite authors, and this was no surprise that I really enjoyed it. And my number one favorite book of the year is A Little Do We Know by Tamara Ireland Stone. I've talked about this since I read it in the summer. This book changed my life. Um, it just made me think more about the afterlife and faith a lot. I really enjoyed this. This is about Emery and Hannah who were once friends a couple months ago, but they ended up getting in a fight and stopped being friends. They're also neighbors and one day Emery's boyfriend is found unconscious in his car outside of Hannah's house and she saves him and it's just all the process of him being saved and he becomes famous and things happen after that and they rekindle their friendship and it is just such a good book. It made me feel so many different things and I loved it so much. So those are my top 20 books of 2019. Let me know what your favorite book of the year was and definitely go and pick up any of the books that I mentioned in this list. Also go and watch my best books of 2019 so far. Some of them I didn't mention in this one but I highly recommend all of those books in both of these videos. Thank you all for watching. I have a Patreon if you'd like to support me there. And don't forget to subscribe and put on my post notifications so you don't miss a video. Thank you all for watching. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you next time.